Hi, I'm Ben Affleck. Welcome to The Graham Norton Show. Oh, you lovely people! Hello! Hello! Oh! Oh, so, oh, 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 for me! Too much. Oh! What? What an amazing welcome. Are there more people in here than normal? What's the story? That's that's incredible. Uh, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a great lineup for you tonight, including later in the show, we'll have a visit from Sir David Attenborough, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I know. He's going to be telling us uh, all about his new series, Planet Earth 2. Now, the thing about this show is it's been shot in this new thing, ultra high definition. OK? And it really shows things as they're meant to be. I mean, for instance, this is what I look like in ultra-high definition. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm joking. That's not me. No. <laughs> According to the Daily Mail, that's a child refugee from Calais. <laughs> uh, so David has had such a great life. Last year, he even met Barack Obama. He did? Yeah. <laughs> And this year, he was introduced to Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, let's get some guests on! We'll be meeting Sir David later and with a music chat for the mighty Sting, everybody! Yeah! But first, he's one of this country's most successful young actors. He shot the famous Doctor Who and is now playing Prince Philip in one of the most expensive TV series ever made. It's Matt Smith, everybody! Matt Smith! Oh, there he is! Hello, sir. Look at you. Oh, oh the, the energy. energy. The energy. Thank you for having me. It's so Hello. Hello. Uh, this brilliant actress, Sean, as Little Dorrit, dazzled as Anne Boleyn in the award-winning Wolf Hall, and now she's playing alongside Matt as our own dear queen. Please welcome Claire Foy! Hello, Claire Foy! Hi! Hi! Hi. Welcome to the cast. Double Oscar and BAFTA winning actor, writer, and director of such hits as Argo, Gone Girl, and Good Will Hunting. Now he's kicking ass in the accountant. It's a warm welcome back to Ben Affleck! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Hello, sir. Very nice to see you again. Sit down. Yeah. Wow. Oh! Feel the British love. Feel the British I love. I do feel that. It's a very polite country, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, very nice. It's welcome back to Matt, welcome back to Ben, but Claire, first time. Yes. No, welcome. Not welcome. scared at all. Oh, stop it. We've met, though, haven't we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember it either. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I know it's really clear in my mind. I mean, even though I was hideously drunk, but, um, yeah. I, did did I cry? No, you were really oh, nice. Oh, good. I was, I was awful, and I just sort of went, I love you. <laughs> really, really hammered. And you were like, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Nice. Taxi for Norton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah for me. <laughs> now, by the way, now, are you familiar with Matt and Claire? I, of course, I'm familiar with Matt and Claire. Okay. Absolutely, and I'm very excited for this uh, series, The Crown. What? That was, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> that's completely genuine. We had a lovely yeah. time backstage. Very lovely yeah. time backstage. Yeah. No, because Wolf Hall, that was big in America, wasn't it, Wolf Hall? I don't really know. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was very it was big on. in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but, but you have been busy. You've been in London uh, doing the new Justice, Justice League, League yeah. uh, where you're... You reprising, reprising, reprising. I guess so. I'll, I'll, you say reprise. We say reprise, but I know, say it's reprise. tomato, tomato. Yeah. I know it's Let's sexy do, when you yeah. do it. Oh, stop <laughs> it! <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. Now, uh, uh, but now, you, you've been in London, and now you brought your kids over. Yeah. And you did sightseeing. You did oh, out and about. We did all the sights and all the. Uh, you know, I mean, I wanted to expose them to. You know, I wanted to have them be cultured, and they came over here for a long time while we were doing it. And I took them around to all the things, and then, of course, I hadn't had a chance to go see them myself, but then you have kids and you think, like, we're gonna go see the changing of the guard, you know? And they say, why, what's that? I don't know, they, they walk around, they change the places, we have to go see it. And I thought there would be, like in America, if you went to do a tour of something like the changing of the guard, there'd be, I hate to admit this, but there'd be like a VIP pass. You, know? like, yeah. you could get backstage, you know? and like they'd, they'd accommodate you. And so I got a tour guide figuring, this guy will accommodate me because I'm a celebrity and I should be backstage and have easier <laughs> access to regular people for some reason. And, um, 
And that wasn't the case. <laughs> he just took me there to the middle of the street. 45 minutes early, we still were so far away, not only could we see the guard, we couldn't even see the fence. <laughs> it was about 100 degrees, and I was just surrounded by 50,000 tourists with cameras looking for selfie opportunities. <laughs> It just became like an exercise in, you know, the examination of the ex what extent you can go with a selfie. And I, we never saw the guard change. And I was like one of those dads who wouldn't admit defeat. I was like, just beyond that horde of people is something you should be paying attention to. It was a disaster. Yeah, you, you didn't miss a lot. <laughs> um, and Doctor Who, well, this is your first post to Doctor Who appearance. Yeah, well, yeah. You have yeah. been on since Doctor Who. Have you? I've done a few other bits, yeah. No, 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 no you have done. No, no, I meant on this show. Oh, no, I'm <laughs> <dear. laughs> You have been. Yeah. It's like, I've worked, worked a little all. bit. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Mr. Defensive. <laughs> I've done things. I, I've been busy. I, I, I did that fringe play. I, I, <laughs> I did do a fringe play. <laughs> <laughs> it was a travesty. <laughs> <laughs> Here, on yeah, here. it's my first time back yeah. on the show. And, and, and again, Ben, we're just checking in. Doctor Who, that's a thing in America, isn't it's it? It's a huge thing in America. Doctor Who's a gigantic thing in America. Yeah. Now, were there times in Doctor Who, Matt, when you just read it or read it and kind of a really... Oh, God, of course. Like, every day. Yeah. <laughs> every day. And then what happens? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. And it's just complete kind of gobbledygook as well. It's all, all, all that kind of science mayhem. <laughs> Nonsense. And yeah. do you get people trying to talk to you, like people who did understand it, trying to talk to you about it? About the science yes. of Doctor Who, yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah, about the logic of the TARDIS and if it actually makes sense, and about the logic of time travel and does a Zygon exist and our side, yeah, all of it, all of it. <laughs> and actually, when I first got the job, all people would do is like shout at me, don't break Doctor Who! Because <laughs> I was too young, and I was only 26, and everyone hated me. <laughs> Don't break Doctor yeah. Who. Because Claire, when, when were you a witch? I mean, in a in work context. <laughs> you know. um, every day of my life. Um, oh God, six, eight, nine years ago. Season of the witch. Yes, it was the season of the witch. Yeah. And were you the witch or just part? Oh, there I oh, am. Oh, yeah. you are. That's me. I was very young, and um, yeah, no, I was the witch, and Nicolas Cage was a Teutonic knight, and I was. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Bear with me. <laughs> you are. Um, but no, yes, I, I had the devil in me and he had to get it out. <laughs> wow. What did he no. use, Claire? <laughs> um, yes. Words. That's got it. <laughs> yeah, words mainly from a big book. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, it wasn't science y. There were very, but, I spoke very little. But did you spend your time in a cage? In a cage with Nicolas Cage, yeah. <laughs> On the outside, yeah, yeah. And, but apparently he was fascinated by you, like you were <laughs> kind of an animal. No, he wasn't fascinated by me at all. I think he just... I, I'm, I think he thought I was odd. Um, and he just was a bit just sort of perplexed about what I did in day-to-day -day life. I think I mentioned Tesco's once. And, <laughs> and then he was a bit like, what do you do? <laughs> and, 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 yeah, yeah. It, yeah, we got on really well. <laughs> <laughs> he was a lovely man. <laughs> now... Uh, ben Affleck, I was listening to uh, the DVD commentary on Armageddon, which is, if you haven't done that, do that. <laughs> because he is very funny on the DVD uh, commentary on Armageddon, where you were explaining uh, plot holes to the director, Michael Bay. Yeah, it was early on in my career, and I didn't know that you were supposed to be political about this kind of thing. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you couldn't just criticise your movie and the director <laughs> and everybody who worked on it with you. Uh, and so I just pointed out what I thought was, I relayed a story where I pointed out to the director what I thought was a minor plot hole, which was that the entire premise of the movie was predicated on the idea that it's easier to teach oil drillers to be astronauts than it is to teach astronauts <laughs> to drill a hole in the ground. <laughs> and I said that to Michael Bay, and he was like, you know what, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's the end of my film criticism days. But you worked with them again. So I did work with them again where in, in Pearl Harbor, where... Uh, I single-handedly won the Second World War. <laughs> <laughs> no need to thank me. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
The Queen will be in touch. <laughs> She'll be in touch. <laughs> it's on her to-do list. <laughs> yeah. sure it is. Now, uh, Ben Affleck, your new movie, is The Accountant. And congratulations, number one uh, in America when no, it came out right. there. People were afraid. They saw that poster. They said, we better go see it. <laughs> Very tough. <laughs> well, no, because it's good because you, you kind of think, you see The Accountant and, you, you, you know, you need the gun right. to know that to this understand. is an action thriller. <laughs> that you're not just going to watch a CPA <laughs> doing your taxes. So. Yeah. Uh, so it opens here today, and it, as I say, it's an action thriller, but it does have a really sort of unusual, interesting premise. Yeah, I play a guy who's on, who's got what's called they call Asperger's syndrome. He's on the autism spectrum, and so he's got a, some acute sensitivities and some unusual sensibilities. He's not great with social interaction, but he's very gifted at math. And it, it's it's a kind of a, an interesting premise is that the, his father, who's a military guy, is afraid that his son and I, I could really identify with this being a father. You're, you, you start to worry about your kids and you think of all things that could go wrong, you know, like their father could drag them to the changing of the guard, that kind of thing. <laughs> and, uh, and so he goes to the lengths of sort of pushing his son into this excruciating military training and making him into this sort of weapon. So on the one hand, the character is very tough and, and trained, and on the other hand, very sensitive and, and uh, thoughtful and cerebral and can do math very well. I so in other words, it took me one movie to do what Matt Damon had to do with Born Identity and Good Will Hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Combined. Exactly. <laughs> Two for one, same price. <laughs> <laughs> because the character is a maths genius, and, and, it's all, and the, the maths, I think, are real in the movie. Yeah. But, but uh, could you get your kind of actor head around that? No, no. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm pushing my luck with my daughter's fifth grade math homework. <laughs> I get most of them, you know what I mean? And I can pretend that's, oh, no, I know that. That's right, honey, you're right there. That was what I was going to say. But, uh... I, I, I'm not a math genius, but the director insisted that all of the sort of numbers that were all over the place had to be exactly right. So rather than me being able to just, like, make up numbers as I went, there was somebody faithfully off camera going, 7, 14, 42, 36. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I defy any one person to come solve the math in the movie. And I love that thing. When, when you've got a math genius in a film, no notebook is big enough. <laughs> they have to write on the walls. Has to be. <laughs> they have to write on the glass. Oh, yeah, they love yes. a window, yeah. a window. Any, That's they... how you have to do it. <laughs> but who does that? Like, well, you don't, they don't make you oh do it. Oh, God, no. <laughs> um, no, I did, what I did was we wanted it to be authentic, so they did a really interesting thing, which was that they get, got me to do my handwriting, and they scanned it all, and they made a, a font of my handwriting that the computer could do, and then they gave it to me, which was cool, until I realized, I mean, I could always just handwrite it as well. It's not all that cool. <laughs> but, uh, but they had a font that was the Ben Affleck handwriting font, and then they used that to make all like the... Like Comic we're, we're so exactly. jealous like now. Like Comic yeah. So every letter can be handwritten now? Yeah. I'm exactly. sending this personal I'm, note I to you. I wanted to take this time. <laughs> <laughs> because I care, I wanted to reach out directly. Do forgive the handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's watch a clip. Uh, Anna Kendrick gets kind of caught up in your world. She's right. a kind of a, a junior She's accountant. an accountant who kind of covers uh, some discrepancies at a company and then nothing is what it seems and you start to unpeel the layers of this mystery. Okay, in this scene, this is you trying to explain your life to Anna Kendrick. <laughs> and, you know, you say you're, uh, you're not great at the maths, but... And this is interesting. Not the first time you've had to grapple with sort of high concept science problems. No, I had some training, much like my character in the movie. I had some yes, training in my child. early life, uh, but this kind of training was training in the, you know, making sixth grade math and science students suffer through belabored explanation of math and science concepts on a child's TV show. Because we didn't get this, I don't think we got it here, called Voyage of the Mimi. And how old were you when you presented Voyage of the Mimi? Uh, well, I did it over a period of time, and I'm not sure which clips you have. There's somewhere I'm 10 and somewhere I'm 13. Okay, I think this might be a later. This is just. This oh, there was somewhere I was even 14, actually, when I came to England. I was oh, a then, bit well, then you might be 14 yeah, yeah, in this yeah. one, because this is in England. This is just to give you a taste of Voyage of the Mimi. Hi, I'm Ben Affleck. Archaeologists, like the ones in the second voyage of the Mimi, are a lot like detectives, but their clues are hundreds, even thousands of years old, and they can never really be sure if they've solved their mysteries, you know, never really know what was happening back in the past. Well, there's a man here, 60 miles southwest of London, England, who's doing some archaeology that might help provide some new clues for some old mysteries. Ooh. Oh, beautiful oh, work. <laughs> Very relaxed. You just, I know how to set up a story. You just, look, you just look really relaxed. Those jeans said, hands in pockets. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you 
get a laugh just on saying I'm Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was a very gangly young man who uh, came to England and, and was, there was a documentary, I think, about Greenwich Mean Time, and uh, I had never been to England before. I was all excited about the time difference. It was a big thrill. I did, nobody made me go see The Changing of the Gardens. <laughs> and, now, when you were talking, obviously, you're a very bright man. Did you understand what they were saying to you? No, it was the case of it was almost the same kind of thing as, as as what you described. But like, and this was real science. You know what I mean? It actually, did make sense. <laughs> but I, it was totally beyond me. I had no idea. Yeah. And I, they worked me to the bone, so I was half asleep all the time. And it would get to my reaction shots at the end of the day. You know, and I was just kind of going like, Yeah, yeah. You know, was, yeah, was, you are a very good actor. But I have to say, you do seem a little unengaged <laughs> in some of your listening shots. We just put together a few. A, a select, and also, so so <laughs> there are two things to enjoy here. It's Ben Affleck's unengaged listening face, mm -hmm. and the experts who, I don't know who you are, experts, but you are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really involved with the physics of these machines. My job is to design these, these big magnetic devices. So those oscillations in skin temperature represent turning on sweating, evaporative cooling, turning off sweating, waiting until the skin temperature gets hot again, and then it cycles. What happens to us here in the stone yard then is to actually t follow the life of one stone in particular right the way from the quarry as we get it here in the rough block. Other animals pant, uh, breathing rapidly over their tongue and mucous membranes. They get evaporative cooling there. And some through the foot pads. There's a little bit of temperature uh, heat exchange through their foot pads, but mostly panting. <laughs> <laughs> You that, did well. That is my... I still use that face. Come here. That look is all over Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> but with those experts, your face should have been just like... It took a look of horror. <laughs> Who has left me alone in a room with this man? There were the sensitivities to things that were appropriate and not appropriate for children. <laughs> How about if he sweats, takes all his clothes off, and you guys do a scene? <laughs> It's okay, he's wired up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll be fine. You can tell if his pulse goes up. <laughs> um, because that, that is hard, though, the listening. Do, do, are you good at the listening phase? I find listening just terribly difficult anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't, it comes very naturally. So, yes. Claire, yeah. can you unengage like that? Uh... <gasps> no, you couldn't. That's quite good. <laughs> that is good. What, what, what? No, 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 it wasn't. It was terrible. <laughs> no, actually, you don't want to do it, because then if people see you doing it in something, they'll go, oh, that's her yeah. not listening. Yeah, bad. <laughs> and uh, is it true your next film going to be you directing a Batman movie? That will happen. I have directed another movie that's coming out over Christmas uh, time, or coming out early November here, and uh, that's called Live by Night. And then I'm planning on directing a Batman movie. We haven't uh, started. Yeah. But, you know, and and wow. the Live by Night, though, that's a real kind of passion project of yours. Yeah, that is. That's like a. It's a, a um, sort of a period gangster story. It's my kind of love letter to the old Warner Brothers gangster movies of the 30s and 40s, and the the days when an epic Hollywood movie was about you know extras and costumes and production design. And so it's got hopefully a lot of sweep, and um, I hope people are still, there's some old people left who are still interested in that, to really kind of <laughs> remember those movies, but it's, uh, it's really special. I really love it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's a lovely movie. We have a lovely cast, Brendan Gleeson, Sienna oh, Miller, wow. Zoe Saldana, great, great people. Are you in it as well? I do, unfortunately, <laughs> appear briefly in the, but only very briefly. <laughs> and then I'm... Well done. Is that always a weird thing? We're like, I know who'd be very good in this role. <laughs> 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 The embarrassing thing is that the character in the book is 20. You know what I mean? And so it wasn't, I was like, well, I don't think, what, I, it seemed like I could play close to 22-ish, 25. So then the producers convinced me that I had to make all these changes in the, to the plot in order to accommodate my geriatric status. And it's out here, I think, in, in January. I think yes. Here. Okay, we'll look, we'll look forward to it. Okay. Uh, very good. Now, uh, Matt McClare's new series, The Crown. It's out now on Netflix. And Can you get it now? You download it now? Yes. Uh, um, yes. No. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. yes. You can, because we're in the future. <laughs> we're already in the yeah. future. Just like the show. You can. You can. You can. If anyone Science can follow bit. this, it should be Doctor Who. Yeah. yeah. Come on. <laughs> I was listening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're in the future, <laughs> and it's streaming now. Yeah. <laughs> This is, you know, it's a huge, this is a, a proper huge thing, and it's the story of the Queen's reign, and this first season is the first 
decade, and obviously you played the Queen, you're Prince Philip, and it's got a great pedigree. It's written by uh, Peter Morgan, who wrote The Queen and the Audience and all those things. Mm. So that must have kind of given you confidence in going into it. Yeah, he's oh, a brilliant God, writer. Yeah. He's, he's so he's so brilliant. <clears throat> yeah, and he's, and he's done a really good job. Yeah, well, he sort of reluctantly is amazing at writing them. I don't think he has any real interest in the royal family, particularly, but for some reason he is able to get inside the head of these people who have lived this sort of extraordinary, extraordinary life. Mm. And, Matt, did you speak to Prince William? Well, I, yes, well, I, I mean, I met him very briefly in, in like, a line-up at the polo. Um... <laughs> Um, so posh. Yeah. Not common at all. Yeah, just casually at the phone. I am common. I, you, anyway. Um, <laughs> damn it. Damn it. We are the middle classes. No, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I met him. Very good. <laughs> That's but my did story. You say, but did you say I'm playing your granddad? <laughs> well, no. So the lady who was doing the lineup said, and this is Matt, and he's about to play, and I thought, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. He's about to play Prince Philip. And I thought, oh, God. And then she said, Eva, she, and, uh, have you got any advice for him? And I thought, God, I'm going to die. <laughs> and all he said was, legend. <laughs> <laughs> He's an absolute legend. No. And I went, yeah. Easy. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, Not much of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's our text. Yeah. Good yeah. acting yeah. note. Yeah. 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 And uh, you're yeah. playing legend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Go. <laughs> I know, panic now. And now, Claire, because your whole experience was slightly tempered by the fact that you just had a baby. I just oh. had a baby, like four months before. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Such a huge idiot, yeah. You know how that happens, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I didn't really think about it at the time. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah still got it, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 You're really nursing, going to the trailer, and I know yeah. that can be yeah. really... Yeah, yeah. I was a lunatic. And I, I think, I genuinely think, I mean, yes, I was a lunatic. Don't... You were amazing. She I was amazing. Was I mean, well, yeah, you were amazing. Well, sort of breastfeeding and well, being was, the queen. Yeah. It's all, an odd thing to do. <laughs> Did you have to do the... I don't, I don't know, whenever I talk about expressing milk, I always do that. Talk about as it. If there's, <laughs> as if there's some sort of foot pump yeah. involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nearly there, nearly got it all. <laughs> it might not, as well it's be. It's not bad, is it? It's some sort no, of... No, it's electronic. Oh, and yeah. it goes... It goes. Matt knows the sound, because like, every morning in the makeup chair, <laughs> I would be there, be there pup, like, a, like a cow. And she would <laughs> whack it up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd hear... Well... Arm, arm, arm. 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 <laughs> yeah. have a nice sort of morning chat, have a cup of tea and... And without fail, someone would say, someone's phone's going. <laughs> I can hear someone's phone going. I'm like, no, no, it's just me. It's yeah, just I'm... my breasts. <laughs> <laughs> I made a lot of milk. I did make a lot of milk during that job. You were like a cow. I was like a cow. <laughs> yeah. heavy, heavy yield. <laughs> now, um, uh... Let's watch a clip uh, from The Crown. This is you and Matt preparing to meet Winston Churchill. Oh. Uh, now, uh, Ben Affleck, you yes. mix in royal circles. I do. I have some experience with the royals. Um, Which one? We're very close. <laughs> <laughs> They've asked me not to discuss it, however. So, <laughs> um, actually, I hadn't any experience with the royals or royalty. We just went to... I mean, I took, like I said, took the kids to, what is it, Windsor Castle? We went to Windsor Castle, we went, we saw the Tower of London, we saw everywhere that the royals go and live and have, have you know, cut each other's head off over history. <laughs> but, um, I took my, my youngest son to, uh, you know, Kidnasium, you know that place? It's like when it's raining outside, oh, it's yes. an yeah. indoor yeah, place yeah, yeah, you yeah. can play and they have stuff, you know, germy balls that they kick around. <laughs> and that kind of thing. Soft play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I went in there and it was pretty empty. And then, um, and then I noticed, like, I had this sort of weird vibe from some of the other grown-ups that were there. We didn't see, and I sort of looked around, they're all really well-dressed, got suits on, you know. And then I saw that some of them had headpieces in. And I thought, wow, Kidnasium is tight with the suit. <laughs> 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 I'm not moving around. <laughs> <laughs> myself some, uh... And then I was the last person in there, for sure, to realize that the, uh, the royal uh, 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 George and... Uh, Charlotte? Charlotte. Charlotte, yes. Yeah. The, those kids were in there playing, and my son was in there playing. So oh. now I can tell him, like, you got a cold from the King of England. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, play with them. Play like, with go them. talk to him. <laughs> impress <laughs> them. <laughs> Next to them. You know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and just so we know, in case they're watching, uh, Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth, could they Netflix and chill to this? <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, why not? Yeah? 
yeah. Netflix and chill. Well, you know, like, could they watch it? It's what I mean. Yeah, it's, it's an expression is it, is in it? America. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a euphemism. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what that means. Come round and we'll watch it. TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, speaking of royalty, my next guest is a knight of the realm. Please welcome the broadcasting legend that is Sir David Attenborough. <laughs> Sir. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, did you meet everyone backstage? Or... But no, not backstage. Oh, you didn't? Yes, didn't. But I've been listening to you every word of it. Oh, thank you. Every thank word. You. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were talking about the Queen, and of course, you played a part in her 90th birthday celebrations. I did. I did. Uh, I was invited to s read something at the uh, St Paul's Cathedral. Well, there was, um, uh, other people were 90 years old. Michael Bond who was, wrote the Paddington stories, he was 90, so he gave me a piece which I had to read about, well, about what it was like when he was, he was 10 or something. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't an accident, you also are 90. Uh, yes, yes, that's true. Yes, yeah. and, uh, you, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't have to do anything. Yeah. But did you, did you, about, did you do idea. anything? Did you have a big... Because you were on here before your birthday and you yeah. were sort of poo-pooing and you weren't going to do anything. Did you have a jamboree in the end? Yeah, yes, we had uh, all the families for a party and the people in the road for a party and pals for a party. So, yeah, we had three parties. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> did they give you the bumps? No, I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, that would be a lot. Uh, now, still going strong, your latest uh, extraordinary BBC series, Planet Earth... Two. Now, it starts on BBC One this Sunday at 8. And we've got a, a sort of introductory clip that just sets the scene and will essentially blow your minds. Here it is. <laughs> and as you, as you say, the extraordinary thing is not just how beautiful it is, but you are... You're still capturing things on film for the first time in this series. Oh, yeah, several things. Several things. Um, there was a, a, a pygmy sloth, which I don't think had ever been filmed before, and it was swimming. Was oh, that a pygmy sloth? Uh, it, the, yeah. Oh, OK. Like there's, there's a, there are several different sloths, yeah, and yeah. that's the smallest. Um, the most remarkable, I think, is, is, of a, is snow leopards. Um, I remember years and years ago writing in a script, because it's easy enough to write a script, you say, you know, cue a snow leopard. <laughs> but nobody <laughs> could actually film a snow leopard then. Nobody. Couldn't get it. It's a very rare animal. It's very solitary. It lives in the high Himalayas, you know. Um, but this time we've got gear and clever cameramen who know how to do it. We've got things called camera traps, you know. You, you, it's a little tiny little camera which is cued. You put it in a place where you think an animal's going to turn up. And the animal, when it comes, the movement cues the camera to turn it on, you see. You don't have to be there. You have just you have to know where the cam where the animal is going to be, and when you get that, it turns on. And as long as the animal's moving, the camera records. So that means, well, in this instance, they put out over twenty different cameras throughout the mountains and the places which they knew that the the snow leopards allowed to appear. And the result is a breathtaking insight into the private life of the snow leopard, which. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, I would have thought was absolutely impossible. Because yeah, actually, we've got a little clip of that. This is just how close those cameras get to, to the snow leopards. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> the <wonderful> <laughs> <laughs> that just got you out for Christmas. <laughs> that is what they call P mail. <laughs> <laughs> And it is a, a nature-loving sofa, uh, you'll be glad to know. Now, but Ben, growing up, your mother was quite strict about pets. Yes, I wanted a dog very badly as a child. And my mother was a single parent and didn't really want the hassle of dealing with it. And she already had me and my brother, which was enough trouble. And I begged her and begged her, and she said, all right, fine, you have to show me that you're responsible enough to have a dog. I said, fine, I'll do that. She said, you have to walk an invisible dog in the morning <laughs> and the afternoon <laughs> for a month. 
And so there I went and got a leash and a collar and wandered around the block for, in the morning and the afternoon for a month consecutive. And at the end, she was like, I'm still not getting the dog. You don't want to get the dog. So I, I did not get a dog. Oh, no. Mom. That is why, yeah, it damaged me. <laughs> she, she's but weir now. weirdly, what are the chances? Matt, you also had an invisible pet. Uh, well, yes, I had an imaginary friend who was a, who was a kangaroo. <laughs> Called Roo. Because <laughs> I used to break things, so then I would blame it on the kangaroo. And then, <laughs> at about the age of four, I realised that it was uh, a pointless exercise. Yes. <laughs> and Claire, you are scared of most animals, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't grow up. The thing is, I only had sort of guinea pigs or rabbits and things. And then, you know, I did meet an elephant recently called Rachel. And um, <laughs> she was really lovely. We got on very well. And, um, but she, but yeah, I just genuinely am very aware that they're very big and powerful and probably don't like me very much. So I just sort of stand back and let them carry on and be scared and cry. Well, was it the elephant that was not very nice to you? It did throw, like, poo and things at me. <laughs> <laughs> but that was just because it was Threw bored. It was, well, it sort of flicked them up at me with uh. its trunk, but it was bored of me by that point. <laughs> it had met me, it sniffed my sign. hand. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> throw shit. It <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone's a critic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we were thinking about this, uh, Sir David, you know, because you've done so much filming over the years, you've been on location, you've been in all sorts of extraordinary situations, we've, we've seen them and remember them. What, was, what were the times when you felt most in danger, where you really thought this might be it? Not, not, not very often, actually. I suppose the time when I really thought maybe this was not doing, going too well uh, was well, I was in, with a very great expert, a, a, an East African expert, knew about big game. He was a great elephant expert. And I was travelling with him in a Land Rover uh, through, through a, some uh, Africa. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> We were driving along perfectly happily, and, uh, and I heard a sort of... and it disappeared, and my expert friend said, did you hear that? And I said, what? He said, well, that, that noise then. I said, yes. He said that was a, a, we were charged by a rhino. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> oh, he said, yes, it, it's a dummy charge. That's what they do, dummy charges. They, they come out and they just charge, and then if they drive off, it's no, no bother at all. So I said, oh, very interesting. And then suddenly there was this noise again. And this time it ended with a boom. <laughs> <laughs> and actually the Land Rover was picked up by its horns on the, from the back end and shook like that. See, and of course... <laughs> <laughs> and, and I saw this chap's hand, remember, his hands on the steering wheels, white knuckles, see? And we went down, then it went boom again. This time it went under the back wheel and sort of shook. <laughs> uh, and eventually the rhino went backwards and retreated. And I said, that was a hell of a dummy. <laughs> 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 and, and, and so, well, well, and then boom. <laughs> and this time it almost destroyed the Land Rover. And all we did was to sit there. And if you'd gone out, that would have been dangerous. But as it was, I just hoped that the people who built the Land Rover had done all the nuts up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was the worst, I suppose, I've had. Yeah. Well, uh, now, someone else uh, on the couch has had a memorable encounter with nature. Now, Matt Smith, uh, you were, I believe, were you, you were the lady friend. Now, were you in a garden or were you in a field? Where were you? Oh. <laughs> Is it the wasp? Yes. <laughs> oh. Well, I was under a sort of veranda. It was like a Moroccan veranda. This is a while ago, I might add, but I was under a sort of veranda and we were, you know, we were, we were, we were, we were, we were. Yes! <laughs> she was on top and I, we, you know, to, you get an idea. Sorry, sorry to be crass, but anyway, to cut a very long and terrible story, thank you, Graham. Um, um, what happened was, she, it, it, it sort of mid thrust, as it were. <laughs> This is true. It's, it's terribly true. I was stung. Ooh. I was stung on me goose. <laughs> so I sort of yelped out, and she obviously thought it was incredible. <laughs> and I got like, oh! <laughs> up and started hopping around, and the bloody wasp had stung me on the knackers. <laughs> oh. Oh. Thank you for that. That, that deserves a round of applause. Yeah. You poor man.
Uh, right, it is time to meet my musical guest. Now, from Supergroup The Police to a glittering solo career, he has sold over 200 million records. Now, he's back with his first rock album in more than a decade. Please welcome, for the first time to the show, Sting, everybody! <laughs> Is there silver and dread when he gets this? Yes. <laughs> we can all fit on. We're very <sighs> good. Hello, Sting. Now, actually, apropos of that story, has Sting... <laughs> have you been stung? Well, I have. I actually keep bees down in Wiltshire. I have a dozen hives. OK. And I usually go and visit them uh, just to make sure they're doing OK, because bees are very stressed at the moment. They're, they're dying out. So I, I go and see them, and we get, a, get along normally. But I was, I was walking away from the hives and a bee came above me and stung me right on the crown of my head. Ooh. And it was the most exquisite pain. It was like a psychedelic experience. And my whole brain went... I haven't been the same since. This is ten years ago. <laughs> I was like, wow, sting me again, baby. <laughs> Apparently the other end, not so good. Well, uh, I'm usually projected <laughs> at that end, <laughs> not my head. Now, there's been a lot of talk of uh, the royals tonight, and I heard you tell a story about how a member of the royal family uh, sort of inadvertently played uh, a part mm. in your success. Well, I come from War's End on Tyneside, where we build big ships. We used Ooh. to build big ships. <laughs> and the only celebrities we ever saw were, were royals. When they would come and launch a ship, they'd, they'd make a speech and, you know, throw some champagne over the bows and launch the ship into the river. So, say I'm eight years old, it's 1960, I'm not sure of the name of the ship they were launching, but right at the end of my street there's the, you know, huge ship. And we're all standing out there with our little Union Jacks in our short pants, and down the street at a stately pace comes this big Rolls Royce with police outriders, and it's the Queen Mother come to launch the ship. So, I'm waving and waving, and she somehow catches my eye. And, you know, she's doing her royal thing that they do. Claire, is that good? That looks very she, accurate. She yeah. catches my eye and, and stays with me and has this amazing effect on me because I, I think, you know, I don't actually want to be in the street. I don't want to end up in the shipyard. I want to be in that car. <laughs> <laughs> really, I, yeah. I want a bigger life. I want, yeah. I want to be in the world. And so she, I suppose, fired my ambition. So thank you, thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing, it's a decade, as I was saying, uh, since you last produced a rock album. So, how does that happen this time? Was it a, a decision or was it just an accident? That was the music you started to make? You know, the most important element in music for me is surprise. When I listen to music, I want to hear a surprise. When I compose music, I want to plant a surprise very early in the composition. And when I decide what kind of music I'm going to present to the public, I want to surprise them. So for, for 10 years, I've made kind of esoteric, reflective records. So what will surprise people? A rock and roll record. And I think I've done that. Everybody's going, wow, didn't expect that. Yeah. And so I'm very happy. And 15th, 7th and 9th is the, the name of the album. And what are you performing tonight? I'm going to do a song called I Can't Stop Thinking About You. Oh, they've stopped it. <laughs> <laughs> There's really no need. Yeah, we booked you anyway. Okay. I mean, that, yeah. uh, <laughs> well, what is it about? Is it about somebody? It's actually about writing. Oh, okay. It's about the, facing the blank page every morning and saying, what on earth is underneath the blank page? It's like a field of snow. I'm hunting for inspiration. It's like a snow leopard. We take it all back full there circle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Right, your band is, uh, is waiting for you, so if you want to go over there and, and get ready, we'll, uh, we'll hear the song. Thank you very much. Sting, everybody! <laughs> Sting, everybody! Fantastic job for Sting! Thank you. That's fantastic. Have a seat down here and then we'll just make sure we get you out of here. Sting! Well done. Very good. Yeah, that was great. Thank you, too. Uh, the album, 57th and 9th, is out on the 11th of November. And will you, will you go back on the road? Oh, absolutely. I've been on the road since 1976. I'm not going to stop. <laughs> do you do, seriously, you're touring all the time. You do shows all the time. That's how I make a living, yes. OK, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to keep you. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, that is nearly it. We've just got time for a visit to the big red chair. Uh, who's there? <laughs> or not? <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Yeah, I'm Aaron. 
Aaron. Aaron. Aaron. Aaron. A R A N. Aaron. Aaron. He's Aaron. Like the jumper. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Like, yes. like the jumper. Aaron. And uh, where are you from, Aaron? <laughs> yeah, I'm originally from Lords in Scotland, but I live in London. Okay, grand. And uh, what do you do in London? Yeah, I'm a dentist. A dentist? Yeah. This is Aaron the dentist. Okay. <laughs> Aaron the dentist, off you go with your story. Okay, so when I was uh, 14, went on holiday to Tenerife with my parents, had a great holiday, came home on the Sunday night, uh, to start school on the Monday. Uh, on the Sunday night, went for a shower, uh, slapped on some after sun, didn't really think much about it, till the next morning, woke up, looked in the mirror, was covered in orange blotches. Turns out I'd used my mum's fake tan by accident <laughs> instead of the uh, after sun. Uh, went in, said to mum, no way, not going to school. Uh, and she basically said, nope, you're definitely going. Sent to school, got taken there, and basically was ridiculed all day and got given the nickname Aaron Brew. After <laughs> that saved it. That saved it. You can walk, Aaron Brew. Very good. All right, here you guys have joined us on the show. Have a go with the red you can talk down to the at this very address. That is it for tonight. Please say a huge thank you to my special guest, Sting! <laughs> Matt Smith, everybody! Good boy! Ben Affleck! And Sir David Attenborough! I'll see you next week on the Langer Night, everybody!